So let's see what happens now with the longer and, and faster walking mo movement. Okay, so the robot was still able to, to perform the movement, but let's now take a look at the, at the plot to see how it went. Let's start with the center of mass position. This looks fine, nothing special to observe here. Even for, in this case for the height, it's pretty much constant, even though we have some more oscillation here. So since we have these oscillations, I expect to see a higher center of mass acceleration in the z-direction, which is not good for our initial assumption. So center of mass velocity. Again, we can see the oscillation in z. X and y, they are well tracked, which is good. Let's see the acceleration of the center of mass. X and Y, they are quite okay, even though here we have some slight tracking problem, you can see it. And in Z we have a higher acceleration, it's not much higher, before it was slightly more than 0 0.1, uh, now it's basically twice as much, which kind of makes sense, we are moving faster. We are taking longer steps, so it is harder to keep the center of mass height constant. So the faster you move, the, the more oscillations you're going to have in the height of your center of mass. If you think about running, in that case it's, it's really impossible to keep the center of mass height constant. But even when you're just walking with very long steps to go further in, the front I need to lower my center of mass because kinematically I'm going down and there is no other way to take long steps but still 0 0.2 0 0.3 it's very small compared to gravity which again validates our assumption of zero center of mass acceleration in Z The, the jump on the y direction of the acceleration is when you change the, the foot. So yeah. So well, basically, when you when you move from the right to the left foot, the acceleration jumps from pushing you in one direction to pushing you in the other direction. And the the problem here, which is still small, is that we have this small phase in which the real acceleration is not equal to the to the desired and the reference. So this suggests that there was something preventing the solver to, to realize the desired acceleration. Probably I expect um, it could be the the force uh, limitation, so the force friction cones, or it could be just the kinematics of the system that prevented the, the robot to accelerate. In the, in the desired direction. Then we have the center of pressure and as I was expecting 
now since we are walking faster especially in the x direction we see that the the center of pressure is getting much much closer to the boundaries of the foot okay so this kind of, of behavior is less robust than what we had before with the slow walking because when your center of pressure is there it, and this is an idea simulation where everything is perfect we can imagine that if you start add, adding modeling errors and sensor noise and all kind of uncertainties you can imagine then this could actually reach the, the border of the foot which means that you, your foot could start to tip over and then you're basically done because most likely the robot is gonna is gonna fall so this is the center of pressure here we also have the the trajectories of the feet left and right this is the z direction so index two and we can see uh, right foot static in a step then you have the left foot right foot left foot and you have the reference versus the the real and you can see there is actually a bit of penetration into the ground of the foot it's small because this is one centimeter so here we are talking about maybe a couple of millimeters of, of penetration into the ground but the, the reference stays exactly at, at seven centimeters it, it's not zero because this is actually the, the the height of the ankle joint not of the sole of the foot so the ankle joint is seven centimeters above the the, the foot sole so this corresponds to the basically ground height and we can see that there is a bit of penetration even if we don't see it in the viewer because it's so small but it's actually there and this is because we don't have a, a perfect tracking you can see it even here in terms of the the height we never really reach the, the desired height of the foot trajectory this is because we have different objectives we have to track the center of mass we have to track the feet we have the, to track the, the joint posture we have the the bounds on the contact forces so what the controller is doing is trying to find a compromise between all these objectives which may be conflicting and in general they are conflicting okay the contact force is not modeled as a um, what can you say? unilateral bilateral yeah it should be always respected. it should be always respected but under the assumption that at time zero you are exactly where you're supposed to be and with exactly zero velocity which is true at time zero so at time zero you can see the blue line is exactly satisfying the constraint so here i have no penetration when i start because i start exactly where I'm supposed to be and with exactly zero velocity the problem is that after I take the step since I'm not tracking exactly the reference you can see there are some deviations right between the orange and the blue then at the time where I'm supposed to be on the ground with zero velocity I'm not exactly on the ground and I don't have exactly zero velocity so even if I impose zero acceleration I don't get an exact contact with the ground okay so actually there is a um, there is a pd correction term in the in that con in that equality constraint so instead of imposing zero acceleration what we do is that we impose an acceleration that is trying to pull me back to the to the contact position okay and indeed you can see that the the, the blue curve tends to go back to the reference it doesn't diverge if i set that pd feedback terms to zero then it would diverge but it's more like a spring it's a spring damper basically yeah. it's a spring damper but this is due to the contact model with the simulation or well basically there is no simulation i'm just integrating okay, the acceleration okay. of the of the controller yeah 
The problem is that since I don't have a perfect tracking, just imposing zero acceleration at the time where I'm supposed to make the contact doesn't give me exactly a, a steady contact. Okay. Because there's a delay there in the track. Yeah. So, so here, I when I when I arrived at the at, at the point where I make the contact, I have a, a bit of velocity, so I penetrate a bit into the ground before coming back to the to the ground surface, basically. Could you change the weight such that during the swing uh, you increase the swing uh, priority? Priority because there is no conflict. Yeah, and you you just yeah. anticipated what I wanted to do. And these are the joint torques. So again, the joint torques by default they are not active in the configuration file. I mean, the, the torque bounds. So we have violations here, 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 here. So what we can try to do is to, to activate the joint torque bounds and see if these uh, go away. And another thing we can do is what Michele just suggested, that we can try to increase the weight of the, of the foot task. To get a better tracking of, of the of the feet trajectories. So now the weight I have here is one for the center of mass and 0 0.1 for the for the foot. Okay. So the foot is less tracking the foot is less important than tracking the center of mass. What we can do is to say that they are equally important instead. So both they have a weight of one. And then I, I rerun the script and I see if I get a better behavior. Let's look at the foot trajectory. And yeah, it is better. It's not perfect because I still have a, a tiny penetration there, but it's much better than before, right? So yeah, and also here at the, at the apex, we can see that the tracking now is, is very good. So basically, the tracking error that we saw before was mainly due to the fact that the weight assigned to tracking the feet was, was lower than the center of mass. So this, the controller was giving priority to the center of mass and to track better the center of mass, it was sacrificing a bit the tracking of, of the feet. So we could expect now the center of mass tracking to be a bit worse, but I don't know if we would be able to see it. No, we don't see it. It's hard to see by, by eye. Probably if we compute the tracking error numerically, we should see a, a slight increase in the center of mass tracking error. Makes sense. Actually, to, to be able to, to set priorities, you should be able to normalize whatever we have in the cost function because sometimes the numerical values could be very different. Yeah, uh, so right now, since we have center of mass, feet, joint posture, these are all motion tasks. So they're all accelerations, so they're roughly the same order of magnitude. Okay. But there are cases in which you start having different units of measurements, and in this case, you should be careful with the weights because you need also to take into account the magnitude of the values you are summing together. If you start having like other kind of derivatives such as jerk or snap, which may happen in, in other frameworks, then you need to take that into account. So the next thing I wanted to try is to activate the torque bounce. Set this to one. 
stop plotting the food trajectories because those are good now and we rerun the script this time with the torque bounds and we see that the normalized torques now they never violate the, the limits we have a saturation here 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 and here so everything is working fine but it works fine because i have enough torque to do everything i want what if i reduce a little bit the available the available torque and we can do that very easily with this with this parameter tau max scaling I put that to 1.5 before it was 1.55 uh, so th the, the meaning of this parameter is basically a scaling factor applied to the maximum torque available to the to the joints of the robots so it, it, it should be set to 1 you're cheating I'm cheating yeah okay. so I, I, in, I had to increase the torque limits basically of that robot to make it walk otherwise I couldn't make it walk and now I'm, I'm gonna reduce a little bit the torque available to that robot and we're gonna see what happens let's see what happens with our slightly reduced joint torque limit voila oh. <laughs> so joint limits joint torque limits are still satisfied but you have seen that the behavior of the robot was much less pleasant to observe center of mass tracking is fine but we can see that there are some some deviation in that at the end even though they are they are small in terms of acceleration we can observe that there are some some problems here at the end right so the real acceleration deviates significantly from the desired acceleration which is uh, the green curve so we are asking for the green acceleration but we got the blue acceleration and the reason for that is clearly the torque limits so the robot doesn't have enough torque in, at that point in that configuration to, to generate the acceleration that we are asking for so it generates a, a slightly different acceleration the same happens here here and now we can see that the cm acceleration in that got much bigger before we were around 0 0.2 now we got to, to 1 so 1 starts being non-negligible with respect to gravity because it's only 10 times smaller still, still much smaller but compared to before we, we are in a, in, a, in a worse position but anyway this time the robot got lucky because anyway it managed to to perform the movement without getting unstable let's try to to decrease the torque limits a little bit more so i, I put the value to 1.4 now i i think it's gonna fall yeah. Yeah. So these are the joint torques. <laughs> so when you start seeing these joint torques, you know that it's not going to end well. This is the center of mass trajectory. And you can see it roughly managed to, to track until this point and then it just started diverging. Then the simulation basically stops when the joint velocities get too high as I, I put a, a condition inside the code that after the velocities are bigger than 40 meters per second um, it just stops which is reasonable because it's, it means that it's diverging and 
this is the center of pressure, we also have some deviation. I think this is due to the fact that the center of, so here we, we see something that shouldn't really happen because the center of pressure is going beyond the limits, which isn't physically possible. But I think this is due to, to a mistake that I made in the, in the script in the computation of the center of pressure because I compute the center of pressure with respect to the ankle, not with respect to the sole of the foot. I should put the, the reference frame in the, in the foot sole. So there is a slight mis mismatch between the two things and that's why I can see this kind of uh, violation of the limits. So what, what's important to, to observe here is that even though we had a walking, a walking trajectory for the center of mass that was compatible with the linear inverted pendulum dynamics, in the end, it wasn't compatible with the whole body dynamics. And this is because when I do trajectory optimization, I'm using a, a reduced model that doesn't capture all the constraints, all the limitations of my real model. <coughs> So in particular, it doesn't capture the joint torque limits because in the reduced model of the linear inverted pendulum, I have no concept of joint, so I cannot represent the joint torque limits, right? Then there, are, there has been some work in trying to map the constraints of the, of the complete model into constraints of the reduced model but it's it's really difficult because you can only capture this by projection so it's going to be something slightly heuristic or only valid in a probabilistic sense but not in a strict sense okay so what are the the constraints that, that are captured by the linear inverted pendulum model Which constraint did we focus on when we, we were writing down the dynamics of the linear inverted pendulum? We started from the Newton Euler equations, then we took some assumption, constant center of mass height, so zero acceleration. Um, we said that all the contact points should be on a flat ground. And then we derived the simplified equation which contains the center of pressure on the right hand side and then we said that this center of pressure should stay inside the convex hull of the contact points and that was sufficient to guarantee that no to guarantee a certain constraint that we have in positive, uh, positive contact forces, positive. exactly. So the only constraint that is taken into account basically when we use the linear inverted pendulum model is that the contact forces should be positive. That is considered the most important constraint, okay? But all the other constraints that we have in the, in the whole body dynamics, so the joint torque bounds, the joint velocity bounds, the kinematic limitation, so my center of mass cannot move two meters away from my contact point because I cannot physically reach it. All these other constraints, or you can think also of self-collision, collision with environments, current limits, whatever you think, you can put it in there. All these other constraints, they are, they are not taken into account. And this is the main source of failure with this approach. We are neglecting part of the, of the constraint of the problem, which is why the research now in this field is, is focusing on using more complicated models for doing trajectory optimization ideally the complete model so that you get uh, a reference behavior that is not only compatible with a subset of your constraints but is compatible with all of your constraints but then of course if you try to do that you go back to the initial problems that we mentioned that the complete model is high dimensional 
So it's a non-complex problem, it's slow to solve, and you you still go back to the to the problem of defining the the contacts. So if you define the contacts as we did here, it's okay because at least it's a it's a smooth problem. So you can apply classic uh, optimization techniques. But if you want to discover also where to to make contact with the environment and when, then the problem becomes non-smooth with the rigid contact assumption, or it becomes really numerically uh, ill-conditioned if you use uh, spring damper contact models. So in any case, it's going to be much, much harder. Uh, one slight improvement that we could uh, apply here without drastically changing the methodology is that we could use the trajectory optimization in, in MPC fashion which we didn't do, but we could, because it's, it's very fast. The trajectory optimization problems that we are solving, it's a, it's a quadratic program, right? And when you, when you solve it, you click and you get the solution instantly. It doesn't take seconds to compute. So actually, you can solve it in, in a few milliseconds. So instead of solving it offline and then just trying to track this reference trajectory, you could solve it offline, online, at every iteration or every few iterations of your control loop. You resolve the trajectory optimization, starting from the current state of the robot, so center of mass, position, and velocity. And especially if you also optimize for the for the footsteps, this makes your controller much more robust. So you can have the robot walking and then it gets pushed and it's able by observing the new center of mass position and velocity that it's able to figure out that it needs to move the contacts to the side in order to, to slow down the center of mass, which has uh, a velocity in a, in a certain direction. So this is an improvement that basically you can get with a only small modification to the to the code and to the methodologies that we we presented, but then if you're gonna go if you wanna go beyond that, you need to go for more complicated models that are non-convex and with higher dimension, and so it starts being more challenging in terms of the optimization problems that you get to solve. So we are a bit early today, uh, but. More or less, I finished the content that I had prepared for this class. So we have another 20 minutes in case you want to ask questions or you just want to play with the code and talk about it. Otherwise, you're free to go. <ride> okay, qui fermo il video perché... Io non sono...